Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to do ruffles. So in the last video I did some shorts and there was a option with a ruffle and I just didn't get to this part. So I thought I'd kind of do a little follow up on how to, a couple different ways to do those um, and show you how I do them. Uh, but first, if you're new here, my name is Kelly. And on this channel, we talk a lot about sewing and embroidery. I have a six needle embroidery machine and a couple different sewing machines. So if that's something that you're interested in, please uh, subscribe. I actually have some exciting news at the end of this video. Uh, exciting for me, hopefully exciting for you. Oh, I, I guess it depends on your excitement level. Um, but anyway, so... I have these shorts and we're going to put a little ruffle on them and there's a couple of different ways to do that. It's kind of the same and you would do the same if you're ruffling or if you're gathering. Uh, like I do a lot of little girls dresses and right at the bodice to the skirt you can gather and uh, it's the same thing. Um, this I did on my new baby lock. Let me, let me flip you around. So this is my sewing machine. I bought this on Facebook Marketplace over the summer. I had been using a uh, older machine for quite some time. Um, I mean, years and years and had done quite a bit of fun stuff on it. But Finally decided it was time for an upgrade and I absolutely love this machine. If you, it, it's not made anymore and if you look it up online, it actually doesn't have like fantastic reviews, but it's a baby lock. It's a great machine. I think sometimes people, I don't know. I mean, for one thing, people only do reviews when they don't like something. So um, people don't usually take the time to get online and rave about something that they're happy with. So anyway, all that to say, I have a foot on my machine. Um, I think it's actually called a gathering foot or... Um, Maybe. It might be called a ruffler. There's a different kind of foot that's a ruffler. I'll show you that one. So this is the foot that came with my machine that's actually called a ruffler or a ruffling foot. Um, and basically, it attaches to your foot here. And then this goes over the screw part. And you feed your fabric through here. And it kind of does this number to ruffle it. The reason why I'm not showing you how to use this one is I tried it and it was acting weird. It was kind of clogging up my machine. And I find, I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but some of these teeth are bent. So I, I think whatever's wrong, it just wasn't working very well. And I was afraid of messing up my machine. So I'm not actually going to show you how to use this one. There are a lot of good videos if you happen to have this foot. Um, now, just a little disclaimer here. I'm going to show you how to do it. You don't need any special foot to do a ruffle or a gather. You can absolutely do it without, um, which is what I did, again, for years and years. I had, prior to this machine, I had a Brother... It's an SE350. It's a really old... Um, it's a combination of a sewing machine and embroidery machine. It was my very first embroidery machine, uh, but I mostly used it as just a regular, and I mean, this is like a Walmart purchase. I made my, uh, did I make my wedding dress on that machine? I'm, uh, no, but I did make my wedding dress on like a $50 Walmart machine. So you don't need, you know, anything fancy to do this kind of stuff. But as you become a more confident sewer and a more active sewer, you might want some of these things. Like I have to say, this uh, ruffler foot that I'm gonna show you on my machine, I love it, I can't believe, and it just happened, this woman who I bought this from, she gave me a whole thing of feet to go with it, and it happened to be in there, and so I tried it and it's magical, like I love it. Um, so, I mean, there are certain things that you want to invest in as you get 
better and, and are sewing more often. So anyway, I'm going to show you this one first, just so that you know, in case you happen to buy a machine that has this little gather foot with it. Um, and then I'll show you probably when you're a new sewer, how you're going to do it. So let's go over to the machine. Okay, so I've got the, this is actually called a gather, uh, gathering foot. I looked it up just to make sure I'm telling you all the right words. I still call it like a ruffle foot because I do ruffles with it as well as gathering. But anyway, it's not, I mean, let me take it off and show you. It's really not anything fancy to look at. I mean, you saw that other one was all big and bulky and had all kinds of moving parts. This is just this. So a lot of it depends on how you set your machine up. So you do have to do a lot of trial and error. Um, like on my machine, and so what I do, I have a little compartment right here, um, and I've got a little sticky note in here of what settings I use to do uh, ruffles. But for mine, the stitch length is a 4.5, and the tension is at six. And then this is just your needle position. It can kind of be wherever you want. But really, all you do is line it up, and I run it uh, at this quarter inch line here, and you start sewing. Um, now it does have this little slot right here. Just like with a ruffler foot, you can, I have to think for a minute which one goes on top. So you can attach your ruffle at the same time that you're sewing. I think it goes like that. Maybe like this, you think? Uh, I'll have to look into that more. I've never done it. I guess it goes like this, yeah. So like this. So you would do right sides together and then it'll ruffle the underneath while keeping this straight. Now the problem with that is you have to then know exactly how long to cut this. And that's just a formula I haven't figured out yet. Maybe I'll get there someday. Um, but I just take my ruffle and pin it to the garment and then sew it. So I don't know, it'd be something fun to kind of work out. I've just never done it. But again, basically you just put it here. Now there is one little trick with this that I've learned and that is, well, let me start it and show you what it does. Where's my pedal? Okay. So it's not really doing much right now. So what I need to do is, or what I do, wait, I don't think I have my settings right. Hang on. Yeah, I do. Um, is I set mine, let me move this over. I'm just moving my needle over. Um, is when I'm sewing, I kind of put a finger back here and kind of give it a little bit of resistance to go against. Nothing dramatic. You don't want to, you know, clog up your machine or whatever, but just hold back a little tension right here. Now see how it's starting to catch and make that ruffle. And so you just keep going like that. Now the only drawback with doing it with this foot is second. I'll just go ahead and finish the whole thing and then show you. And then what I do sometimes too is, so see how it kind of ruffled it up? But look, here at the end, I quit giving it some resistance. So you can just go back and redo it. Um, either way. See, I'm kind of just letting it bunch up right there. But again, the so the only drawback with doing it this way is there's not much give here. So if you go to put it on your garment and it needs to be stretched out a little bit, there's not much give to be able to do that. So 
I'm going to show you kind of the classic old-fashioned way. It, not old-fashioned. It's really just the way most people do it. Um, and that way you can do lots more adjustments. So we're just going to use our regular foot. Um, this, this fits kind of weird. So this goes on my machine and really should just kind of stay there because it's got uh, the type of feet that clip on and off. But for whatever reason, this one foot is not a clip on. It's one that has to be screwed in. But anyway, all that to say, let's put our regular foot back on. And then all we're going to do is we're going to set our um, tension and our stitch length. And so just a regular straight stitch. Why can't I get my foot on? It's because I'm on camera. Usually when I snap it down, it kind of... Do I have it on backwards or something? Oh, hey, how about that? I put it upside down. Or did I? Let's see what I did. Oh, I sure did. Okay. Let's snap it in first so we know what we're doing here. Okay. Again, this part usually stays on the machine. All right, so we've got our regular foot on, and all you do is basically set a basting stitch. Um, and depending on how your machine, what your machine is like, my old machine just had a certain button that I pressed that was uh, basting. This machine's kind of funny. It's got this flip up thing right here that shows you what all stitches you have available. And I don't even think any of them are a basting stitch. You just use um, this right here. So a basting stitch is a really long stitch. So we're actually gonna set it to like a, okay, it only goes up to five. So five's good. So we're gonna take that five, excuse me while I get this, and we're gonna run two lines of basting stitch. So we'll use this one now. Um, and we're gonna do one on the edge and then one a little bit further over. Now, when you're first starting out, you might think um, that you only need one. Uh, oops, I'm not, I'm not, uh, not threaded. Um, you may think like, oh, why do I need two? I don't need two. And you could probably, you can get away with just doing one row of, uh, of a basting stitch, but it really is easier if you um, do two rows. So we're just gonna run a row of some long stitches. And then, uh, lift your needle up and leave a bit of a tail here. And then just do another one just a little bit over. Now, with basting stitches, it doesn't really matter if it gets over into uh, off of your seam allowance because once you stitch it, you can, basting stitches are really easy to remove if you need to. So don't worry too much about that, although I do try to keep them within the seam allowance. Okay, so we've got two rows of basting stitches. It's kind of dark over here. Let me move you guys over. So we've got two rows of basting stitches. And the way you get them to ruffle is, I'm sorry, I'm making you kind of blurry here, is, um, and you can't really tell, but this thread, my bobbin was a slightly darker thread. It's more of a beige and I had white on top, but you want to pull your, uh, your uh, bobbin thread. So you basically take one of them and start pulling and it starts gathering for you. Oops, you were out of shot. So it just kind of starts gathering and you can adjust this. This is what I was talking about earlier. 
These are a little easier to adjust than with that gathering foot I have. So you just work it through and sometimes, like this is a pretty short uh, ruffle, but sometimes if you have a really long piece, you can get to the, and sometimes I pull from both sides, so depending on how long this is. But sometimes if I have a really long piece, I might do this in sections. So I would take, I would run my stitches about halfway down, stop it, leave a tail, and then start up again so that you have sections you can work with. Um, but something like this, I don't necessarily need to do that because it was it's so short. Um, and it doesn't really matter which, um, if you start gathering the top edge or the bottom edge, or it's, you know, line of stitching. But you just get it all ruffled up. So this is a little more tedious than the gathering foot I have, but you do have a little more control. Although, like I said, once you kind of figure out your machine with that gathering foot and you know, like, what's going to give you the result that you need, it's really not, it is a, a lot faster. But again, that's a specialty foot and not everybody has that. So you just work it until it's the ruffle that you want it to be. And then you would just take your garment and sew it on. So let me use my, um, my ruffle that I did with my gathering foot. I've got all kinds of threads come out here and I'll show you how we attach the ruffle to the garment. All right, so this is basically one leg of the shorts and we want to ruffle on the bottom. So you can, like before you start ruffling this, you can mark like maybe your center, maybe mark some quarter pieces. Um, I know just from experience that this is gonna be just about exactly the length I need it to be. So I can just start at the end here and start pinning or clipping it around the bottom edge. Um, I've said before, um, you know, you can use pins. This is one instance where I much prefer these clips. These clips give you a, a much better control than pins on something like this. So you just do this and clip and go all the way down. And then you can go straight to the serger with this, but I typically, uh, well, I guess it depends. I'd probably just take this over to my serger, but you're, you can go ahead and sew it first and then serge it. Um, well, and actually you can do these ruffles on a serger too. That's just not how I do it. Um, and I'm just kind of showing you guys how I do it, but uh, there, is, there are some settings you can do on your serger that will create the same ruffle look or gather. But I'm just going to clip it all the way down and then I'll take it over to the serger and uh, serge it all down. Okay, so like I said, I went ahead and just serged it on to the main piece um, and then I pressed it up. And what I'll do now, probably not on video because it's not all that exciting, is I usually go ahead and do a little top stitch right here. That's not necessarily necessary, but it does give it a nice little finished look. And then the only other thing I wanted to point out about doing um, a ruffle version of these shorts is you do really want to go ahead um, and once you finish the ruffle, go ahead and cut a straight line. It makes the two pieces just that much easier 
to, um, I, can't get, <laughs> I don't have room to get my ruler in here, but I'll go ahead and use my straight edge and cut a line here. Um, it does make it easier to sew the two sides together. And then when you sew it and you serge it, you will, you know, since it's not done in the round, you'll have that serged seam, but I haven't found it to be a problem. It looks just as cute as ever. Um, so there you go. That's how we're, we would do that with our different types of ruffling. Um, and I think that turned out really super cute. Okay, so just as a last note, I said I had a little bit of a, uh, exciting news for me. Again, maybe for you too, depending on if you're into that sort of thing or not. But I am getting today, any minute now, I'm getting a cover stitch machine. Some of you aren't going to have any idea what that means. Um, and frankly, I didn't really know what a cover stitch was until a few years ago. Um, it is a totally unnecessary machine, um, but I needed it. I needed it. So it looks very much like, where's my serger? looks very much like a serger, but it doesn't cut the fabric like the serger does. And it does, it's apparent, apparently, again, I don't have it yet, but it's apparently really good for um, hemming knits uh, and doing like flat seams. I don't know. And there's all kinds of exciting things we're going to learn. So probably my next video will be an unboxing of that and kind of going through the basics I have no idea where I'm going to put it. You can see this table. I've got the sewing machine and the serger, and there's really no room there. Then I have my industrial machine, and then my embroidery machine. Like, I, I don't know where we're going to put the thing, but it's really something that's going to be good to have when I need it, but not something I'm going to use every day. So I might be able to put it on the floor, or on a shelf or something and just grab it when I need it. I, again, I don't know, I'm, I'll be learning. It's nothing I've ever used or tried, um, but I just, I needed it. I've been wanting one for years. So if you've ever tried to hem knits, you know why. It's even with a serger, it's still, it's hard to get a nice professional look on a, uh, on a serger or a sewing machine with, when you're working with a knit. So I guess we're gonna find out, but stay tuned. So subscribe because the next video, we're gonna open that and we're gonna play with it and we're gonna see if we can do some fantastic things. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out um, and I will see you soon. Bye.